Hello, what culture gaming people? It's me, Ewan again, swinging on by from the comic channel to talk about an underrated gem from 2008. Spider-Man, as opposed to most comic book characters, has actually had quite a successful history when it comes to the gaming medium. Fans can recall fond memories of swinging around Neversoft's version of New York in the PlayStation 1 Spider-Man game and its follow-up, and Treyarch's adaptation of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies were equally revered, as was their adaptation of Brian Bendis' and Michael Bagley's Ultimate Spider-Man comic, which released to great success in 2005. There is another Spidey title out there, however, that wasn't looked upon so fondly when it first released. In fact, Spider-Man Web of Shadows currently holds a bang average 67 rating on Metacritic, and well, it's just wrong, isn't it? Yes, people certainly played it, so you can stop writing out that comment right now, but when we talk about the best Spider-Man games of the 5th, 6th, or even 7th generation of consoles, well, Web of Shadows tends to get lost in the conversation. And though yes, there are undoubtedly better Spider-Man games out there, for the true believers that look past the Metacritic average, well, they found a game that put a smile on their face. With branching paths, a unique premise, and a brilliant cast of characters, it's high time Web of Shadows forced its way onto the pantheon of Spidey's greatest titles, before we're all whisked away by the glory of Insomniac's upcoming PS4 exclusive. With that in mind, I'm Yoon from What Culture, and here's why the best Spider-Man game no one played is Web of Shadows. For those unfamiliar with Web of Shadows, the concept is actually fairly simple. After yet another chastening encounter with Eddie Brock, we find Spider-Man having rebonded with the symbiote, and the game wastes no time at all in establishing the action. You're actually put into an apocalyptic version of New York where a symbiote army is terrorizing the entire place. Then the game flashes backwards about four days or so, where you're actually given the suit and, well, things only get better from there. From then on in, players are given the option to switch between the red or black suits at their own will. And yes, it's as good as it sounds. It's a premise that carries the game from start to finish, both in gameplay and in its narrative. This is where the game really sets itself apart, as both the red suit and the black suit bring with them their own gameplay advantages. Donning Spidey's classic costume allows players to swing around at a faster pace, be more agile and, well, yeah, more spider-like. The black suit, on the other hand, brings with it a selection of devastating attacks and more health, at the expense of that speed and agility. How and when you use the costumes then also influences the game's narrative, with the black symbiote of course influencing Peter's decisions for the worse if the player allows it to take control. This alone grants the title a certain kind of replayability other Spidey games have somewhat lacked, and though yes there is little nuance to the decisions players are forced to make, being given the option of either being a friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man or an absolutely evil one, well it's interesting to see play out nonetheless and helps make Web of Shadows look like a unique game compared with its contemporaries. What makes Web of Shadows so enjoyable, however, is that it does something other Spidey titles hadn't really done at that point. Yes, the voice acting is all kinds of ridiculous in certain places, and the character designs can look a little bit weird as well. But still, what it does so well is that it taps into the fan base's obsession with the symbiote and plays with it to great effect. We all know it's ten times as fun to be in the black suit, fighting crime in a more brutal manner and falling for Black Cat, but just because it's the more enjoyable path to take doesn't mean it's the right one, and this is where the game's true genius comes in, because it distills Uncle Ben's immortal words, with great power must also come great responsibility. Fans should be happy to note then that there are four potential endings in Web of Shadows, an absolute good one, an absolute evil one, and then two that kind of sit in the middle. Sure, they don't account for every decision the player makes, but they're all worth seeing firsthand and intimate just how great it is to see these two depictions of Spider-Man clashing against each other. Throw in a ruck of cameos from the likes of Wolverine, Luke Cage, Black Widow, and Moon Knight, and you not only have a game that acknowledges Spider-Man's wider importance to the Marvel Universe, one that also dangles one of the most stylish-looking redesigns in comics history right over the noses of players everywhere, and sees if they can all resist temptation. The result is a game that is both familiar and unique, and though yes it does have its flaws, repetitive combat being but one of them, it's something for Spider-Man fans to bear in mind, and perhaps even reappraise, before they head into a new Spidey tale this September. 
And that was our look back at Spider-Man Web of Shadows. I want to know what you all think of the game down in the comments below. And then if you could like, share and subscribe, my pals at What Culture Gaming would sure appreciate it. Then if you're feeling particularly kind, well, head on over to whatculture.com forward slash comics. We might have something for you. As always, I've been Ewan and I'll see you next time.